Today, I want to speak to us about the God factor in our everyday life. It's going to be a reflection of God's factor in our everyday life. Not long ago, three weeks ago, I was driving to go and pick my son from basket. I saw this house, this beautiful house that was on sale. As I saw the house, I was just thinking and said, oh, it's a beautiful house. Just wondering in myself, who has this house? And then suddenly my mind began to go further to say, funny enough, they are moving out, somebody else is moving in the same house. Before the house, before the person who lived there, it maybe has been a dream for them to have such a house, but now they're no more there. As I was just talking to myself, I saw a picture of an, a man that was old. He, doesn't, he was not doing well, and he said he is the owner of the house. And in that picture, he was wearing something like a, a damp, the pampas or something like that because he's old, he can't control himself anymore. And he was talking with somebody else in that vision I saw. And he was talking about how he has acquired the house, how he has worked hard to end these things he, he has gotten. But then he says this word that sticks to me. He says, I am old. It seems like life is meaningless. You know, you are born and then you are dying. It's like you work, all, you work so hard in the presence of achieving your dreams. It doesn't make sense. It's like everything seems meaningless in life. As, I was, as he was talking with this person, I was like, wow. Life, doesn't it seem meaningless to most of us? Or some of us? Once in a while in our life, it seems like nothing matters. It seems like life doesn't make sense. Just like what the ecclesiastic says. He says it seems like everything is just nothing. Meaningless, void, empty. And every time we lose focus in life, everything becomes empty. Ecclesiastic, he says, everything is just meaningless. We come today, we die, and life continues. We were in a funeral yesterday, and I, I, I was just reflecting about this. Every time we come to a funeral, people are talking about the life of the one who has passed out. What I did not hear people say was about the job she had, about the career, about the education, about how much she had. Nobody mentioned those things. They were talking about how she imparted their life, what was her focus, why she was alive. Maybe some of us are sitting here hearing me, life seems to give no, to, not to make sense because of situations. For you who is a believer, life doesn't have to be that way. No matter what you go through, the author of uh, Ecclesiastes, at the end of his, this thought about meaningless, he says something. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Basically, in his own thought, the idea of meaningless is not really true. Because there is a God who created all things, who is going to judge all of us, both for the good and the evil we have done. But for you, who is a believer, you don't have to wait for a judgment to live a meaningful life. We don't have to wait at the end of the day and realize there is a God that loves me, that cares, and even wants me to live a meaningful life here on earth. We'll go through different situations in life. We'll be challenged, we'll be tempted, we'll be going through like every other person. But the idea, there is a God who cares, who sent his son to save us so that we can have a meaningful life. If life was without God, yes, it's meaningless. 
It doesn't matter how we live our life. But Jesus, he says, I have come. I have come that you may have life. Not just ordinary life, but have a meaningful life. An abundant life, he calls it. This is what, can, what is possible for each and every one of us. If Ecclesiastes says, man, man's duty is to know God. And that God is the God who says, I am for you. I'm not against you. I love you so much that I want you to live a life that is meaningful. A life that is meaningful. The question I want to throw out to you today, you who is a believer, who, you who have a little bit of idea about God, how does your knowledge or understanding about God affect your everyday life situations? Because if it doesn't, what is the then need of knowing God or not knowing God? If our knowledge of God doesn't affect the way we relate or tackle situations of life, what is the meaning? We go back to meaningless. Whether you are a believer or not, meaningless. But that is not God's intent. God's intent is for me and for you to live a meaningful life. While we are here on earth, Jesus, when he was praying for the disciples, he prayed, he said, to, he said to Father, he said, do not take them away from this world. I just pray that you protect them. They are in the world, but they are not of this world, which is a separation. We live here, but we are not supposed to act like people who are from this place. In our everyday life, we have challenging situations. During Corona, there was a lot of noise, a lot of uh, people talking our theories, and a lot of things were going on. Then Corona is over. We thought those noises will stop. It's not going to stop. People have opinions, ideas, uh, whether we think, we believe, or what. It doesn't really matter. But we are going to be hearing all these information, noise everywhere. Some of us getting married, having children, have our job, have our responsibilities have our church, have to do what we have to do. But you know what happened? In the midst of this busyness and noise, we lose focus. We lose focus. In the midst of everything, we just lose focus. And that's why I have come today to challenge somebody. And we're going to do it this way. We're just going to reflect together about life, about your everyday life. With God. Because God, knowledge of God, it is not just a thing we know of. It's supposed to be our reality. A consciousness that's supposed to change everything that we do in life. This is not like inviting you to a religion. It's not like inviting you to join a club. No, this is a life-giving message that is still changing lives today. When a man or a woman come to Jesus... The Bible says he has literally moved from darkness to light. There is a change and there ought to be a change. If not, why would we even talk about Jesus dying on the cross for us? But once in a while, as believers, we know the truth. We have experienced him, but due to the noise and the busyness, we forgot and start to just to live like a other person. Some non-believers are better than the believers in some cases. How does your knowledge about God affect your situation? How does it affect it? Or have you even know, could come to know this God we are talking about? Because it's a reality. It's my reality, and some of you is also your reality. If not, today, I'm going to challenge you to make him your reality. Let's just reflect together about God, or God factor in our everyday life. The fact that we can talk about God tells us something about God. We believe that everything that exists is created by God. And none of 
Nothing was created without a purpose. The first thing about God, as we reflect together about this God factor in everyday life, is to think about purpose in life. Because from the beginning, when God created everything that looks beautiful, he said to man, he said, I want you to be fruitful. He cannot be fruitful for nothing. It's because there is a plan, there is an assignment for you, there is a purpose in life for you. So the question I want to throw out to you, are you living in that purpose? Are you, have you? Or do you even know it? Are you living in it? There is a story, you know, in the Bible, when God comes to Jeremiah, he said to Jeremiah, 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 before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. You are not here by accident. Before the foundation, I, I thought about you, and I have an assignment for you. Because everything I created that looks good, I don't, I don't create things by accident. I thought, I, th- I thought th- through things. He said, I saw you before you showed up. And I have a plan for you, he said to Jeremiah. And he said to Jeremiah, I have appointed you. In other words, I have given you an assignment for this word. He said to Jeremiah. But in the New Testament, Paul comes into the picture. He says something I want us to read. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 to 10, he says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ, in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in, in them. In other words, even when you say, I don't know, and you come back to reflect about God, he says, through Jesus, there is something that God has prepared before hand for you, for me, and for you. Without purpose, our life is not focused. Purpose helps us to, to be focused in a direction, to know that we are, not just by, we are not just here by accident, to know that you are living in what you are called to do, no matter how difficult the thing is. At least to, to come here when you live, people will say, yes, she lived her life, he lived his life. Are you living in that life? I understand, you know, sometimes some of us who are foreigners, when you move to a new place, there is challenge. You try to figure out, find your feet in the ground. There are a lot of new things, new impression. Everything seems new. I used to make joke with people who are foreigners who come new to Denmark. I said, you just have to be prepared because everything you do is wrong. Even saying good morning is wrong. Because in Denmark, if you say good morning after 11 o'clock, it's no more good morning. They will ask you, what is wrong with you? Everything you say, even the bye-bye you say, it is wrong. You just have to acknowledge that. But there's nothing wrong with you. You are just in a new place. My problem is, as believers, when we come to a new place, we allow the environment to change our focus, our purpose in life. That's why I have a problem. When we reflect about God, the first thing I want you to think is purpose. Am I living my life on purpose to what I know he has called me to do? If you have forgotten it, ask him again. If you have not received it, ask him again. He created you. He has a plan for you, just like all of us. Maybe you are doing something that is good, that's giving you a lot of money, but life is meaningless when you know you are not doing what you're supposed to do. Life is not funny. You can get everything. You can, you can be promoted in your, in your career. You can get the money, but life doesn't make sense because you know that you are not happy. You know you are not doing what you're supposed to do. You may build the houses you want to. You may drive the car you want to. You may have the money in your account, but still it does not change life. How many times have I had a call? People say to me, I have all the money. Look at what I have. I just bought a new car. I paid cash. If I want to be honest with you, I'm not happy with my life. I want to challenge you. We can, <laughs> you can choose to 
live a different life. Because the funny thing about life is sometimes we start off by trying to impress people to make our parents happy, love us, like us. To tell them that we have done what they have asked us to do. But along the way, at the end of the day, when God is going to judge us, he's, going to, he's not going to ask you, did you do what your mom tell you to do? Did you do what your colleagues expect you to do? Did you do what your children want you to do? He will ask you, did you do what I've asked you to do? The second thing about reflecting the God factor is your story. What is your story? Story of redemption. Story of have met Jesus. Have you met Jesus? Do you have an encounter with him where you are sure that if you die today, that you're going to be with him? Have you any story? Because it's this story of redemption that reminds us of who we are, the new creation that we have become, that we are not who we used to be. We can choose to live a new life. What is your story? I know that in church, church is open for everybody. Anybody can come to church. Coming to church doesn't make you a believer. Because you come here and walk here or do something here doesn't make you a believer. What makes you a believer is your faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior. And this is not like, oh, they told me, I told them. No, 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 no. You have to have this encounter. You have to come to a place where you say, I gave my life to him. Nobody can convince you about that. Nobody. You have to come to a place where you have this encounter with Jesus that changes your life. Because when life is difficult, you remind yourself. There is a, a story of Paul in Acts. After Paul had an encounter with Jesus on his way to Damascus, his life changed. I mean, not read everything here. If you, when you go home, you can read it in Acts 26. But what I find so interesting with Paul in this incident was that he was standing before the king to defend himself, which was also prophesied about him that he's going to do. But you know, what he had to choose to do here was to say, listen to me, let me tell you who I am. I used to be someone who was even killing people. I used to be this person that really thought I was doing God good by killing even Christians. I used to do this. I tried my best. I want to be a good person. I, want to, I, want to, I did everything I knew of. But he said, until one day, as I journey to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, he says in verse 13, At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen in, on, on the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Saw, so, saw, so, why are you persecuting me? He says, in verse 16, he says, But rise, stand on your feet, and I, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and the things which are will yet to reveal to you. So Paul have a story, a story of redemption, a story that says before and after. Does Story of before and after. I have that experience. I know who I am. I know what I used to do before I met Jesus. I don't have time to go in detail to tell you, but what I can tell you that gave me this courage and boldness is the moment I gave my life to Jesus, something happened to me. There was a suppression between dark and light. There was a suppression. I was not in a doubt that this is a reality. When you have not met Jesus personally, you play, you play games. We try to deceive one another. But at the end of the day, if God is the one that sees God in the secret, he sees everything. He sees you. 
But apart from even God seeing you, it is, for me, living a life that is meaningful. I don't live my life to be good. I live my life to please him, which at the end of the day, I don't regret giving my life to Jesus because through him, my life has a meaning. My life has a meaning because of my life with Jesus. What is your story? Have you received him into your life? Have you had any way in a counter with him that you know he called you and he tells you, hey, my son, my daughter, I love you. I love you. And I want to spend time with you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter the temptation you are facing. Because this is what helps us even in our temptations. The fact, I have a choice. Unlike before when I don't know God. But now I have a choice. We are all tempted to do some crazy stuff. But the fact that I remember my story, I know I am not who I used to be. Because I changed my life. I have an option to do good. To love him, to love my neighbor, to share my life with other people. He gave me an option. I can choose because of my story. The third thing as we reflect about God factor in our everyday life is when you go through challenges in life. Maybe you are in a challenge at the moment. Maybe you are doing the things you know is the right thing to do. You are doing what you feel. This is a God thing to do. You are maybe doing it. And there's a challenge. Sometimes some of us think, if I've only been God's plan, there will not be a challenge. Think again. If I only do the right thing, there's no problem. Think again. The problem is not the challenge that we go through or face. The question is, who asked me to do what I'm doing at the moment? Am I doing it for me? Or because I had him told me what to do. There is this man that inspires me when he was in a challenge. His name is Amos. Amos was called by God to go and prophesy to the people of Israel. As he started his ministry of prophesying to the people, and then the people who has been prophesying start to tell him, stop prophesying, we don't like you. It's like, go away with this prophecy thing. What are you talking about? We don't, we go. A challenge. Why doing the right thing? Why doing what you're called to do? A challenge comes. Amos, he says this to them. He says, in verse 7, from the B part of it, he says, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Now and therefore hear the word of the Lord. He says, I was not a, a prophet. I was not a pastor. I was not born to be a pastor. I didn't have the background, the education to be a pastor. But God called me. I had him call me. So there have been seasons in my life where things have been so tough and challenging. I remind myself, who called you? Can I ask you a question? This is just us too. Nobody's hearing. It's only us. Okay. This is just for you. This is just for you. What you are doing, who told you to do it? Just be honest. Is it for who? Can God tell us what to do? Does he care in the things that we do? Does he love us so much that he wants us to walk with him in our everyday life? 
We believe he does. We believe he guides us, the job that we have. This is not like if you are successful in what you are doing, then it's not God. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reflecting on the God factor in your life, which means you are doing what you know or sense of that God wants you to do. You are in a place where you know that this place I'm supposed to be. Because when we think this way, it helps us to see around us. Let's take an example. Some of us who are foreigners. If you live with this idea that God is with me, he brought me to this country for a purpose. It makes me to see and look around me, the people that I surround myself with, the way I communicate to the people around me. If not, if it's meaningless, of course I don't care who they are. I would choose people according to their color, according to how they respond to me. But if I know I am here on purpose, I'm sent by God, I'm here to be a blessing to people around me. God didn't... <laughs> Sometimes we think that God is making a mistake and suddenly God will come and say, oh, are you in Denmark? Oh, I didn't know. Well, how did you come? How did you arrive? When was that? Oh, God, help me to... Und- Sometimes that's how we feel. Like that's how we think. That's God. We were surprised. God, is, he, he, he's like he lost the track when we entered the plane and landed here. Or when we entered the ship or however we come to Denmark. That then God is no more there. I want you to reflect about this. Okay. Some of us who are here, you had a call of God upon your life when you were in your country. And then you find yourself in a new place. And you thought, that God that have called you or have revealed himself for you is in that place. Can I be honest to you today? The reason I came to Denmark some years ago was because I have this sense of God calling me. I'm originally from Nigeria. I was living in Togo, doing business. And I begin to have this sense of God's calling upon my life. I struggle. I said, it cannot be me. God, you made a mistake. How can it be me? I can't speak. I can't, I don't have any education. I don't have, I'm not qualified. God, you you made a mistake. So in this struggle and confusion, you know what I did? I just, I did exactly like Jonah. I find a way to run away from Africa because I thought in Africa there is God everywhere. There is God everywhere. Maybe that is why I'm I'm going crazy. I came to Denmark. I don't know, where the, I don't know where, what the capital of Denmark was. I don't know anything. I just said, let me run away from Africa. I came here. I found out that God is everywhere. After spending a miserable two and a half years here in Denmark, I said to God, I surrender everything. I said to God, I surrender And I went back to Bible school without knowing anything about my future. But I trust his calling over my life. So when life goes difficult for me, I remind myself, I did not call myself. I did not choose what I'm doing. He called me and anointed me for such a time as this. And it also helped me to take what I do seriously. So what you are doing, is it what God asks you to do? Or you're doing it for yourself? The last thing as we reflect about the God factor in our everyday life. Maybe you are there in your life. If you want to be honest, if you want to really be honest, either you have not known God personally, or maybe you are in a situation where the business of life has taken your focus away from what you know is the right thing. So basically, things that are dead around you, your spiritual life is dead. Everything around you seems dead and dark. I have a good news for you, which is this thing that the gospel brings to us, hope, even in the worst case scenario, hope. If you have ever received Jesus into your life, everything still seems dark, I have a good news for you. 
Because Paul says this in Romans. He says in chapter 8, verse 9. He says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of God, Christ, he is not his. In verse 10, it says, but if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. If you are aware, you have given your life to, your, to God and his spirit dwells in you and you are going through difficult times, maybe even this idea, you are conscious about what is good and evil, it has gone crazy. You are not even doing the right thing anymore, though you know it. Your spirit it seems to be darkened. The good news is this. Even as I'm speaking now to you, the Bible says that the spirit of God that lives inside of you is going to quicken something in you again so that you can come alive again to live the life he intends for you, to live in his will for you. He says it's possible. It is, it's not magic. It is possible. Even as I'm speaking, I can sense the Spirit of God hovering over this place Amen. to give life, to call you back to where you are supposed to be. You don't have to go through life miserable. You don't have to go through life living as if it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have many meaning. Because the danger, the danger, the way it manifests is the way we live our life. It is the way we relate to people around us. It is the way we relate to the world around us. If life is meaningless, it also means the way you live your life, it reflects that. Can I tell you, at the end of the day, 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 just like we went on the funeral yesterday, is either we say bye bye or we say see you again. Either people come and say her life impacted my life, his life impacted my life, the way she loved God reflected on the way he or she lived her life here. God factor in our life makes a huge difference. It makes a difference in the way we do our job, in the way we live as a family people, the way we talk to people around us. We can easily be distracted by every other thing and we begin to speak to people as if they are nobody. But can I encourage you? God's factor in our everyday life will help you to live a meaningful life. For you, for the people around you. People around you will be so happy they met you because you live a life on purpose, not when you try to please everybody around you. In conclusion, like Ravi used to say, I want you to reflect about the God factor, God's presence in your life. Do you know him? Have you given your life to him? This is not what you do for other people. This is what you do for yourself. If you have not done it, either you are here or you are watching online, nobody can force you to do that. I have experienced him in my life, just like millions of people have experienced him. And today can be that day where you will say, you know what, I want to meet this Jesus. This is not like a fancy talk. It has the power to change things in our life. And secondly, maybe you are here. You know God. But if you want to be honest, 
you are far away from the life you know is the right life. If you want to be honest, you know it. And you have a lot of excuses of why you do what you do. Or maybe, genuinely, you are just confused. You think maybe God is not any more interested in me. I have a good news for you. He is. That is why he sent me here to come and speak to you. To call you back to the life you know of. So that you can live this meaningful life. That at the end of the day, you will stand before him and say, I have done what you have called me to do. Amen. God is a good God. He's not calling us to be religious. He's calling us to live an amazing life. To get in touch with him and get in touch with our destiny. Here, he is calling today. He is calling you. Get in touch with him so that your life can be fulfilled. Whether at home or at work, in church, it will be fulfilled. We don't have to live life as if there's no meaning in life. Of course, there is. We don't live our life to wait for when we go to heaven. We can actually start to live now. Can we pray together? Father, I just want to thank you for your word today. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are not a respecter of person or persons. Anywhere people genuinely call on you, you respond. I pray for anybody who is in this room who have not known you as your Savior. I pray, I pray that your spirit will call them. I just pray. I just pray in the name of Jesus. I just pray. And I just also have this sense, oh, you can hear God calling you. He's calling you back to what, uh, to what you know of. He's calling you, hear him. Do not say no anymore. Like I did many years. Do not. Father, I just thank you because your presence that is in this place is breaking every yoke. It is bringing clarity to the confusion, to the confused mind. Thank you, Father, because this is not just a show. This is not just a talk. Your presence is our reality. We have come to know it, know you and experience you. The same way I just pray that your presence will go forth from this place and bring life and strengthen things in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are with us, that you love us. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.